Hi, we're on board the SNS uh, Swan 65 Evrika, and with me is Richard Little, her owner, and Chris Watts, her captain. And we're just going to have a chat about uh, this quite remarkable uh, cruising yacht. Uh, so Richard, can you tell me a little bit about the history of um, Evrika and uh, how you kind of came to buy her? Well, I had a Swan 65, a bit like a lot like this, you know, for five years back in the end of the last century. Um, I chartered her for five years, raced her. Um, I fancy doing it again, but not with the racing. Mm -hmm. So my motivation was very much around my daughters, uh, who were teenage and uh, I thought this would make for a good holiday arrangement and it has done. We've had five fabulous years, five summers, uh, three summers in the Mediterranean, one in the Caribbean and we've had great fun. Fantastic. But Evrika's just a little bit special isn't she? She's not like other 65s in that she has a history, a narrative. Uh, well I wanted an original, as close as I could get to an original swan. Um, before we'd uh, changed the Swan a lot to race her, you, you want to do other things. Um, but here was a boat that was pretty close to as it would have left the yard in 1982. It's, uh, it was owned by, uh, it, originally it was owned by a Greek uh, fellow who, uh, whose daughter took delivery of it and raced it for a couple of years. Then, uh, then and, and isn't there an icon here on the There is, there yes. is. There's uh, an icon from that original owner. And then after. But she did quite well, didn't she? Uh, she won a, few, won a few gongs from mm -hmm. uh, sort of racing seasons. Uh, after a couple of years, she sold it to uh, Rick Wright, the keyboard player from Pink Floyd. And he sailed it for 25 years. Um, quite well known for having sort of lived on it much of that time. And uh, it was fun going out to the Caribbean and having her recognised um, around quite a few of the uh, the watering holes of the Caribbean. Um, I think the hospitality was legendary, wasn't it? I, I <laughs> various stories, but he was, he was certainly very serious about sailing. Yeah. Uh, I met a couple of his skippers um, mm -hmm. over the period as well, and uh, it was a boat that was that was sailed a lot. Though not hard, he didn't race it, I didn't race it, mm -hmm. um, but it's done an awful lot of miles, I suspect, um, and seen a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. And what was it like coming into Antigua, for the, you know, when you came into Antigua after the passage and docking the boat and, and knowing that she'd been there so many times before? I don't think we were there for 30 seconds before locals were running up to the boat, shouting, I used to drink and party on this boat. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. yeah, and it was like that all season. That must have been great fun. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Everyone's got their own story as well. Yes, well, I yeah. bet. I bet. I bet. I bet we could talk about the stories of them yeah. for yeah. sort of, um, a long, long time. Okay, so you did the Caribbean and then, or first, you, Mediterranean. We first. did a few years in the Mediterranean and uh, that was superb. Uh, yeah, she's, she's a beautiful sailboat and there's nothing nicer in a in a, in a marina or a harbour, everybody recognises the swan. I mean, you know, it's, it's a, quite a, uh, an eye-catching boat, and uh, we fooled around very happily. Um, did, did three full seasons, overwintered in various places, Barcelona, Sardinia, um, and found it all really very practical. And, but when you bought her, she had a refit, didn't she? She had a refresh. We did a lot of work. So yes. what did you do to her after the purchase? Uh, complete rewire, complete replumb. We, uh, the basic equipment stayed the same. We kept uh, refurbished, but kept all the winches. We kept all the uh, deck equipment, really, didn't we? Um, and even managed to keep the original heads below, um, which are uh, great fun. The baby legs, freshwater flushing. The, exactly. Yes. 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 No, we added the freshwater flush, but the. Uh, they are the originals, and uh, yeah, that's, that's the, I don't know. It just it gives it some atmosphere. 
we were, we were pleased to have done that. Mm -hmm. um, the new thing we, we did we, this season, we put a uh, last season, the last, so I think we put a little prodder on the front so we could fly in asymmetrical um, instead of the old style spinnaker so we could go shorter handed. Really, and, uh, that must actually make a big difference, short handed. I'm not really a downwind sailor, and although we routed to come downwind on our way back, we didn't see much downwind. We ended up uh, sailing upwind all the way here, so the, the new sail's only been up twice? A couple of times. A couple of times, mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Um, you used it on the crossing? We did, we did use it on the outbound a little bit. Yeah. And Chris, how long have you been on board the boat? Uh, for uh, four years now, I think. Um, <clears throat> And I, I joined uh, just after the, the, the initial refit up, which I thought but, um, Yeah, it's a great boat. Any weather, any conditions, the sailing's, the sailing's awesome. Yes, I bet. So, I bet. And uh, you've moved her around the Caribbean, just uh, you and your girlfriend. Yep, uh, my um, partner came on mm -hmm. for the Caribbean season, we just did, as a, a chef stew. Mm -hmm. um, mainly to gain experience for herself because um, she's new to the industry it was very kind of Richard to, uh, to let her come uh, but yeah we moved the boat around just the two of us um, and it's no it's no problem saving the boat short handed so Richard for you what's the standout the single moment about ev owning Evrica that just is the best for you I've had most fun crossing Biscay and uh, 11 times. 11 times? Yeah, that's what we've done over five years, going back and forth to, wow. the, to the Med and then most recently uh, coming back across the Atlantic. That's what I like. I'm, I guess I'm a bit of a heavy weather sailor and uh, that's where I've had most fun. Mm. And what have the conditions been typically? I mean, on your 11 crossings, has they been fair? Has oh, we've had some, we've had some stinkers, uh, but really good, <laughs> good crew on board. I mean, that's not a two-banded sail. No. <laughs> um, no. It, We'll, we'll, we'll go with five or six uh, for a full, full uh, ocean sail like that. Right. And uh, we, uh, we sailed around Finisterre with 55 knots behind us um, and a huge sea uh, with a, a couple of sperm whales, surfing whales wow. next to us. Quite extraordinary. Uh, yeah. We had, um, we had a Biscay trip where we saw some incredible phosphorescence uh, one night and dolphins swimming in swimming phosphorescence. Into, which I've never seen before. Yeah, if you wanted one picture of that yeah. thing, that yeah. would have been dolphins doing what they do in complete phosphorescence in a That must have been just extraordinary. Yeah. Very yeah. Cool. Yeah. And for you, what is the, mo the one most special thing about Evrica? I mean, I know, you know, they are, I think they're the most beautiful serious yachts in the world, but each one has her own personality, her own character, her thing that is special about her. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, there's nothing happier than, than sitting on the helm, I must say. Sitting on the helm, on either side, and just looking down. Uh, quite a long, from by my experience, quite a long uh, way to the bow, and just seeing the whole thing, the complexity and the simplicity of it. Um, yeah, I have a great pleasure on, on this boat. And what's your standout moment? What's the moment that you thought, gosh? Oh, um, uh, well, I've, I've, I've worked on a couple of Swan 65 previous to this one. Mm -hmm. um, and like you say, they're, they're one of the best boats that you can sail. And, uh, and yeah, probably the same as Richard, sending it downwind in a big sea. Um, with whales swimming next to you, and uh, uh, yeah, I mean, it doesn't get much better than that, really. I mean, for me, as you said at the beginning, it's the originality of the boat. Uh, because, you know, because these boats are not as young as they once were, a lot of people have changed the saloons and, and, and done, you know, things in them to modernise them. And what I love about this yacht is she's as she came from the factory. Uh, when you bought her, she had the keyboard over there, yeah, and that's gone. And again, that's been beautiful. Well, we wanted the done. accommodation. We wanted the, the. It took quite a lot of effort to make it look like it did originally. Yes, yes. Um, we, everything came out of here. We even changed the keelson down below, 
And, uh, so why did you do that? Well, the surveyor thought it might not have another 15 years in it. Right. So we thought, great, we're doing a 15 year refit. Maybe we'll, we'll have that out and we'll redo it. Um, and then uh, it gave us the opportunity to take the engine out, to replace the jenny. Uh, so, yeah, we, we, we equipped her on a 15 year basis. We didn't want to touch anything for 15 years that was material. And, and that made sense then to rethink what we wanted to get all the accommodation into the cabin. Um, so, so we refitted that. What were the other major things that we did? Not much actually, looking around. It was just getting it back to the, the, the state we wanted it. The full varnish throughout. Full revarnish, yeah. yes. And that does look lovely. Yeah. And the other thing I always think about is these little marks here, <laughs> where um, um, an owner ago there was a parrot on board, yeah. and the parrot did make a little bit of a mess of the headlining, but it's been left because, of course, that's part of the yeah. narrative of um, yeah. Ebrica. So, Chris, you're in charge of the maintenance schedule for the boat. Mm. Um, how difficult is that? Easy? You know, what does that involve? Uh, well, it took a, a year to kind of get around exactly what has to be done and when it has to be done in order to keep, to make my life as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but once you're on top of it all, um, it's actually just uh, just day to day care of things, and um, uh, the, what's lovely about the boat is everything and anything that you work on um, is easy to get to. Yeah, so the access is good. Access is really good. It, the bilge is uh, there's a lot of boat under the water, and the bilge is quite big, um, and the way the the, the wiring's been run. And where all the sister pumps, sump pumps, and uh, ho water hoses, water water pipes, water um, water pumps, the water heater, everything um, is really easy to get to and work on, uh, which is quite nice. Even the engine. Uh, I mean, yeah, obviously there's a few things where you've got to do the old contortion act to get down there, but um, but most of it's dead easy to work on, yeah. which is quite nice. So, in a way, this is a happy and a sad moment because I remember when you bought Everika and then she went away and she's had her adventure and you've had a great time with the boat. And now she's back and she's the project's over, it's time for a new owner. What both of you would you, you be your message to her next owner? Have fun. Yeah. Yeah, have fun. <laughs> yeah. Get out there and do the bear biscuit. Yeah, yeah. yeah well, don't take it too seriously if, if that's. Not go where, go, go wherever you like, yeah. anywhere you like, Southern Ocean, uh, Northwest Passage, whatever you want to do. The boat will do it for yeah, you. Yeah, the boat will The boat won't let you down. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. It'll take you as far as you want to go. <laughs>